Turns out you should probably keep the key in the car. I guess it thinks, you know, it's in Albuquerque. Uh, I don't blame it, right? It thinks the wheels are getting stolen off this thing. That, that slide doesn't ever get any easier for some reason. <laughs> but I, I want to thank you guys for showing up today. Um, today's very cool, right? It's a very unique day. Not every day do we get to actually work on a Tesla, let alone one of the new Tesla Model 3s right here. Now, if you're pretty savvy in the electric vehicle aftermarket, um, you'll realize there's not really a ma aftermarket at all. There's really not a whole lot of parts out there especially when it comes to performance parts, right? The new, the new Supra shows up and there's already larger turbos, bigger exhaust, an entire body kit that makes it want to look like an old Supra. I don't get it, but anyway. But when it comes to Teslas, there's not a whole lot of things you can actually do performance-wise, right? There's a handful of things you can do as far as tire size and tire grip, but not really anything about improving the zero to 60. And Maybe in a later episode, if you guys want, we'll get into that in more in depth. But at the moment, the only real thing you can do is suspension and brakes and you know handling related stuff like sway bars. So today, we're lucky enough to actually put lowering springs on this Tesla Model 3. So depending if the vehicle is all-wheel drive or rear-wheel drive, we'll lower it a different amount. I think it's a, a one inch for all-wheel drives and 1.5 inches for rear-wheel drives. I'm not entirely sure. But regardless, it'll give this Tesla Model 3 a much needed better look, get rid of some of that wheel gap. And we also got some wheel spacers to bring those factory wheels out a little bit more flush, get that Audi BMW look that everyone likes. So if you wanna learn how to install your own Tesla Model 3 lowering springs, stick around, because we're gonna show you exactly how. Turns out you should probably keep the key in the car. I guess it thinks, you know, it's in Albuquerque. Uh, I don't blame it, right? Thinks the wheels are getting stolen off this thing. Hey Google, how to put Tesla Model 3 into service mode? Here's what I found on the web. Hey Google, how to put Tesla Model 3 into tire change mode? Here are some details. Of course it's a YouTube video. No way, bro. There's probably not a tire in this thing, to be honest. And if we go over here, it's magic. Look at that. Not a single groove on these brakes at all. I actually don't know how many miles are on this car, but it would be like maybe less than two or 300 if this was a normal car. So, and for those of you who don't know about this, every Tesla, well, just about every three phase AC electric car has regenerative braking, but more on that. This Tesla has regenerative braking and it's extremely strong. You can have it on full regenerative braking or you can have it reduced, but when you have it on full regenerative braking, single foot driving is totally possible. So really using the brakes, like these bad boys here, are kind of a thing of the past. Maybe like cold temperature when your battery's just, when it's full and the battery's nice and cold, but for the most part, there's like not a single bit of wear on these brake pads. Anyway, so onto the suspension. So in the rear, there is a, it's basically a multi-link system, uh, actually very similar to what the 350Z has, almost identical as far as the spring cup goes in the back. 
that's gonna be the spring that we're gonna be replacing. Now in the front, I wonder if Elon owned a 350Z because the suspension is very, very similar. We got an A-arm up top and we have a radius arm and a lower control arm. Uh, it's pretty much spot on the same as far as the design and concept goes. So we'll be taking out this uh, strut, undoing the sway bar and decompressing that spring. I'm wagering the rear is gonna be a lot easier. We're gonna start there, so let's get started. This thing's American made, still uses millimeters. Give up imperialists. Okay, so our spring is no longer being held in anything but this guy. So we're gonna start lowering it down. That's the end of it. There we go. I guess I'm not surprised. Okay, so there's not a whole lot different from our factory spring to our aftermarket one. However, you can see that one is progressive and one is not. So hopefully this factory one provides a little bit better ride quality while also lowering the vehicle. We'll be able to test it out pretty soon. All right, all of our rubber stops are back in place. This one being a little bit shorter, hopefully is a little easier to actually get back into place. This, uh, say this lower one is clocked. Yep. Based off the dirt and wear marks, make sure you have it clocked appropriately and good luck. Everything's lined back up. All that's left to do now is to recompress our spring, get our shock and our control arm connected. All right, so we're gonna do two things down here. We're gonna remove our lower shock bolt and also our sway bar end link bolt from the shock itself. Just gotta drop a bolt on the ground. Let's see here, 18 for our end link. Now I'm just gonna disconnect our ABS sensor and remove it from the upper control arm. I'm gonna loosen this 10 millimeter that's holding our brake line to our knuckle. And this will give us a little bit more room 
to hang our control arm out so we can get our shock out. Our upper control arm ball joint is actually secured with this really nice bolt. Uh, it's a captured bolt that um, you don't have to mess with any type of cotter pin or any type of lock nut or anything like that or a nylock. It's pretty sweet. You just undo this bolt which clamps around the ball joint and allows you to slide it right off. In order to do that, you're gonna need a 15 mil on one side and a T50 Torx on the other. Now, I'm not gonna fully take it off until we finish the stuff we need to do up at the top, but I'm gonna loosen it all the way up. There we go. All right, now we're ready to go up top and take our top I don't even know what to call this thing. It's like a strut mount assembly. Okay, so the bolts in question are gonna be this guy, which we've already removed. This one here, one you may not be able to see back here below our brake master cylinder, as well as our windshield washer fluid, and then one tucked up underneath this little valence. So I believe they are a variation between 13, 12, and 15. Now I'm gonna leave this one in or undo it all the way. I think it's always good practice to start with the ones that are the hardest to reach rather than have this whole assembly just hinging down and you're messing around with one bolt deep somewhere in the middle of the car. I believe this whole assembly is allowed to give, you can kind of adjust camber and caster slightly with all of these bolts. So that may be the purpose of this whole design. Not sure. Okay, now we're just gonna shimmy our strut mount out. You have to be careful with some of this plastic stuff because it is everywhere. There we go, now we have it free. Now we can actually re fully remove this bolt which will allow us to remove the entire strut and strut mount and upper control arm assembly. So it looks like you could actually access it right here without even taking off this uh, upper mount, but for the sake of doing so, I'm gonna try and undo these and uh, hopefully this thing doesn't blow out into my hand. All right, now we're just gonna take this over to our spring compressor and disassemble our top hat. not the same shape as the other one. Yeah, I can kind of say I'm not really impressed with the way this top is lining up. Um, the bottom lines up really well. Uh, the top, not so much. But uh, we'll see what happens when I decompress this. Maybe it'll fit better. The only thing that seems to be slightly different here is of course, to lower the vehicle, you have to have a shorter spring. And most of the time, um, companies that do this mimic the plane at which the factory spring was at, which is what allows our top hat to sit nice and flush. This one, as you can probably see, comes up to a curl and stops. That allows it, of course, the shorter height, allows for the drop of the vehicle, the desired right head change that we're looking for. But they didn't do that by flattening and making this plane, you know, almost or close enough to flat as the factory one is. So if you look here, we're getting a undesirable angle on our top hat. 
and this is sometimes common, but nevertheless, not desirable. So we'll see what happens when we put it all back together. We might be able to manipulate this back into place. Since our spring is shorter, it affects how the lower half of our shock is clocked in comparison to the upper half. As you can see, the one that we haven't disassembled yet, um, if you really pay attention to the strut mount here, sorry, the uh, sway bar end link mount here versus this one, um, they're not gonna be identical, but this one is obviously in the wrong location. So we're gonna have to try and re-clock this once we get it back in the car. So far, so good. ABS lines. We're going to reconnect this brake line. Torque everything down. And now we're ready for the wheel spacers. These are some nice hub centric rings. It's a very nice fit. Since we have two people, our trusty cameraman Dave is going to get in the driver's seat and hold down the brake for us once we get all these on. This will allow us to torque them down. All right, ladies and gents, had something unfortunate happen. The car fell off the lift and it got shorter. So we forgot out of all the excitement of working on that Model 3, we actually forgot to take video footage of the car coming down and its ride height, which I know we're a bunch of amateurs here. Sorry, like it's terrible, but we did our best. So all things all, just to wrap it up, the springs went in really well. The alignment issue we had with the front and the top hats wasn't a problem at all. Later on, it settled just fine and the car drove great. Uh, great thing is we, we kind of adjusted the uh, tolerances in that strut mount bracket all the way in to provide us a little more camber, and it seems as if the car doesn't even need an alignment. The geometry of the suspension is a way that apparently, you know, it doesn't get that messed up when you do that stuff. So, that's great. Um, all in all, we'll leave you with this. A couple of things. We, we're really happy you guys continue to watch this stuff with us. We'd love to keep providing it. So if you get a chance, please go ahead and hit subscribe and hit the bell button for us. So it allows us to keep doing this. And two, we'll leave you with some awesome photos we took of the car afterwards. So see you next time. Thanks a lot. <laughs>